Okay, uh, everyone, this is a, a, about managing asthma and anaphylaxis uh, in extremis, but we're going to start with some anaphylaxis ba basics and uh, see how we go. Th the first thing I just wanted to talk to you guys about is well-being, and this is a fairly emotional talk. Uh, it's emotional for me to deliver. Um, I, I tend to uh, mention some emotional things, but I want you to take away the message ra rather than the emotion. Hopefully the em emotion strengthens the, the message, but uh, I really do want the focus to be on the medical learning um, a as well as the story. Um, th the thing is, we, we all want to do the best when we turn up to, to work, and we uh, no nobody wants to, to do the wrong thing, and we're all trying to, uh, to do as, as um, as well as we can. Um, sometimes things do go wrong and I think we need to be uh, able to learn from that in a really constructive way and so that's part of what this talk is about. Um, it's also, um, talking about wellbeing, it's also a little bit about uh, you know, what gives you wellbeing in the workplace and for me that's really about being good at my job. If, uh, if I'm having a, a really busy day at work and there's ambulance queued out the door, I feel okay if I can do a good job. The other thing that helps wellbeing is having some role models and people around that uh, around you that can support you and that you can look up to. So uh, that, that's both having your colleagues that, that you connect with, but also um, really finding people who inspire you, who you look up to, and who you want to be like. And sometimes that's not just one person; it's a mixture. You know, take the the, the good bits of the people that you like and leave the bad bits uh, behind. All right, so. Having said all of that, let, let's crack on um, and s remember, take as much away as you can from, from the, the medical teaching. Okay, anaphylaxis fatalities. Uh, we're going to just talk some epidemiology. Um, if you die from anaphylaxis uh, and you're allergic to food, um, it's almost always young people and it's uh, almost always with someone with asthma and it's usually from bronchospasm that they die. Venom anaphylaxis fatalities are mostly middle-aged and often out in the bush. Uh, uh, you know, remote from medical care. Uh, medication triggered fatalities, they are, um, you know, they're often older people with co comorbidities, but that's, that's not to say that you, you, you can't die um, any of those ways and you, that, the, that you fit one of those cohorts. And for example, there in Sydney at Prince of Wales Hospital, there was a coroner's report delivered a few months ago that uh, outlines how a 20 year old with appendicitis died from anaphylaxis in recovery to the Gamadex, um, which he received intravenously. He had a history of asthma, not, not bad asthma, but he died from bronchospasm. So that was medication related. Um, again, asthma was the, the important history as a young person dying from anaphylaxis. So we're going to just go to part one now. So part one is about recognising anaphylaxis and just the importance of that. It's just as important to diagnose mild acute allergies as it is to recognise anaphylaxis. When, when we talk about anaphylaxis, we talk about, we, talk, we, we, we call it anaphylaxis when there's uh, wheezing or blood pressure problems or airway problems, then we call it anaphylaxis, but actually it's a spectrum from type one, uh, so type one hypersensitivity uh, might be mild. And I'm gonna give you an example of Max. And as you know, um, Max is my 15 year old boy. And uh, as, as many of you know, he, he died from anaphylaxis. And we're going to get to Max's story in a little while. But Max's first reaction was mild. He was a toddler sitting in his high chair, eating some peanut butter, and he wanted to scratch his face off. So there was a trigger, there was an acute reaction, but it was a mild reaction. It was skin symptoms. But that, so just because he had a number of mild reactions didn't mean that, that, that the next reaction and the way that Max actually died when he was 15 years old was from anaphylaxis it's really important to diagnose those mild reactions because then they get linked into allergy services, they get their EpiPen, they get education and hopefully um, avoid, avoid tragedy. Sometimes those mild reactions are only on history. So you have to, uh, you have to be able to um, talk to the parents, acknowledge uh, the story um, because that it may, may be just as important. So something that we can do better on um, historical features of allergy uh, on, on patient history are really important as seeing it in front of you. Um, in Australia, what we, we've got uh, a set of 
uh, accreditation requirements for hospitals. Uh, we've adopted some for anaphylaxis, and you can see the list there. Uh, what what are we sort of you know recognising anaphylaxis for is, is pretty straightforward. So I'm not going to go through that. When they're wheezy, they're wheezy, and when they're blood pressure problems, uh, uh, when it's in front of you, it's, it's kind of um, pretty straightforward. But I just want to draw your attention to the, 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 the number two point, which is the immediate uh, availability of adrenaline. Now, I'm going to just draw a parallel to childcare centres and schools, primary schools and high schools in Australia, where they've completely adopted and done a fantastic job of uh, adopting action plans, educating teachers, updating education, practicing their EpiPens, and making sure the whole school is, is aware and, and can respond to an anaphylaxis emergency. So if you're in a child care centre, there's an action plan on the wall. Uh, the, 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 the child care centre staff have got the EpiPen, and if there's a reaction, they'll, they'll get it straight away. Now, I'm not sure the same can be said at busy emergency department front doors. Um, it takes time to get adrenaline. Some of us don't stock EpiPens at the front door. Uh, it's really important uh, for us to <laughs> be as good, uh, provide as good a care in an emergency department as can happen in a school and a childcare centre in a high school. It's, uh, it's important. Uh, intramuscular adrenaline does not need cardiac monitoring. It should be a triage medication. And I encourage you all to look at what happens in your own shop, in your own emergency department and say, right, well, how are we going to um, get, get immediate adrenaline at the front door? If they're going straight through to recess, that's great. Um, but what if they're not and it's full and you want to give some adrenaline? Like, you need to have a mechanism for that. And the nurses need to be engaged and be empowered to, to facilitate that um, bec because they should be able to. So that's, that's, uh, that's number one. All right. Uh, just in terms of time frame and diagnosing an uh, acute allergy, uh, it, it, there's a trigger and exposure, and then it's like it's 30 minutes. It's uh, it happens in you know 15, 20, uh, a very short time. It, it's usually pretty obvious. There are unusual cases where the exposure not, might not be for some time. There's some delayed absorption, uh, and it might be up to four hours, but that's uncommon. Usually. It, it, so some of them you need to scratch your heads and think about because oh, you're not sure what happened, uh, was the exposure you know, some hours ago or not. Um, but most of the time, trigger, exposure, some acute symptoms within, you know, within a half an hour. Okay, so that's a good thing to take, a home, take home. We're not talking about viral urticaria here where the kid's got some, uh, so some child has got a, a, a viral uh, urticaria that's been going for a couple of days. That's, that's not acute allergy. So acute allergy is exposure, reaction, and it might be mild or it might be severe. Um, there's some diagnostic criteria internationally for, for anaphylaxis. Um, uh, these have been around for a long time. I think the, the only missing, uh, this, is what, this is when we call it anaphylaxis, when the acute allergy is severe enough to call it anaphylaxis. These are the criteria. Now, um, in terms of the number three, it, that the only thing that's really missing there is now I think we um, most jurisdictions would include uh, after known allergen exposure, uh, if there was evidence of bronchospasm um, alone, uh, we would add that to number three, which is, uh, you know, if, the, if, the, if you get exposed and there's low blood pressure, we call that anaphylaxis. Um, if it's just blood pressure in isolation, the same thing applies for bronchospasm. Um, but, uh, you know, use your clinical judgment. Um, I'm, giving, uh, I'm giving you this busy slide, which is kind of full of words, but it's really just a grading system for acute allergy. This is a Delphi study published in the States uh, in 21. It, it, it's really good. I like the concept. And I, I think it demonstrates how far we've got to go in emergency medicine in talking about anaphylaxis in a consistent and sophisticated way. Um, we call anaphylaxis, acute allergy anaphylaxis when there's breathing, blood pressure or airway problems. That's great, we call that anaphylaxis. But just remember, we, as we were talking before, it's a spectrum. So the skin symptoms we call mild, but still part of that spectrum of type 1 hypersensitivity acute allergy. So this, this, uh, this slide shows you that there's different grades, mild, moderate, uh, uh, you know, from, from one to five, one being mild, five being, uh, you know, dead or close to arresting. 
and, I, and I think that's really useful. And I think we could adopt a much better way of talking about it in emergency departments. Oh, I think the, at handover, I think this person, young person has had acute allergy, but it's mild. Um, I'm going to refer them on, uh, you know, it was, it was grade two, um, as opposed to, yeah, th this one had acute allergy, it met anaphylaxis criteria, et cetera, et cetera. So w we need to be more sophisticated. Anaphylaxis is really becoming a, a bigger problem just in, in the last 20, 30 years. So, you know, the, the first EpiPens were only around in the last, uh, in the late 80s in, in Australia, um, probably earlier in the US. Hello to people in the US. In Australia, we use these action plans. I'm not going to go through them, but for, uh, we expect everyone to go home uh, with an action plan. Uh, they're freely available on the, on the ASCIA website. Um, I'm just showing you this slide again, really to, 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 to hammer home the point that, it, that it's a spectrum of disease. So from mild to moderate. So I've, I've just cropped it down uh, from one of their other slides in this paper and I'm just drawing your attention to the purple box on the left with an arrow that show that there's acute allergy that's mild and acute allergy that's life-threatening. So we're skipping part two to go to part three. Part three has only got one slide. <laughs> it, it, here it is. It's organising follow-up, okay? So the patient has recovered from their acute allergy, uh, that you've treated their anaphylaxis, you've done a great job, fantastic. The majority uh, get one dose of adrenaline, maybe two, they go to short stay uh, or, or for some observation for four hours, that's what we do uh, in, at our place, and, uh, and then they go home. But when they go home, it's very important. They need, you need to discuss the allergen and, and identify it. You need to tell them how to avoid it. Um, sometimes that's easy, like drugs. Sometimes it's hard, like food. Um, they need an EpiPen script and training. Uh, they need an action plan and they need a referral to an allergist. Um, in Victoria, in Australia, we have a mandatory notification system which is all anaphylaxis, not just food, and that, um, that's related to making sure... Uh, to it, it really helps get some data about what further changes need to be made from a public health point of view. So that's follow-up. It's all straightforward, but it's really important because if you don't do it, then that mild reaction uh, who doesn't get appropriate follow-up then is left uh, exposed and, uh, and gets mixed messages. So it's just, it's, it, it's, it's really important.